Something I'm remembering about this album that will be really fun for the car listening aspect of things. This album has some really catchy hooks. Good for the singing along. We're back in the car now. We're filming unchronologically, but for me, the next album we're listening to in this Cat Empathon is their third studio album. So many nights. Released in 2007 and later again in 2008. Remember those dates, they'll be important later. So Many Nights was recorded in Melbourne, Australia, and overdubs were done in Malibu, USA. An overdub, for those who don't know, is a technique used in audio recording in which a pre-recorded audio track is played back and monitored while simultaneously recording new, doubled, or augmented audio on top of the track. The overdub process can be repeated multiple times. This technique is usually used with singers, but is also used with instruments and ensembles. Overdubbing is usually done for the purpose of adding richness or complexity to a track. For example, if there are only one or two artists involved in the recording process, overdubbing can give the effect of sounding like many performers. Some of my favorite overdubbing in this album comes at the tail end of No Mountain, where Felix is seemingly singing completely different lyrics on the dub, and still the two vocal tracks harmonize in a really hypnotic way. When it came time for overdubs, the band was apparently in town to perform on Jay Leno. So they temporarily lodged up in a house overlooking the ocean worth somewhere about 10 million USD. A humble abode. It was owned by, quote, a guy who made his money producing karaoke tunes. According to the band, this record is the result of music written and developed on the road, and is perhaps a tribute to the many, many nights we have played in hundreds of cities throughout the world. Produced by John Porter, who also produced for bands like The Smiths, this was the first time a producer recorded music with the band, meaning he actually busted out an instrument and helped out with some of the song overdubs. John Porter, who was a guitarist for bands like The Roxy and Eric Clapton Band, performs guitar on the song Panama, as well as slide guitar on the track No Longer There. The results of the overdubbing done with Porter is a more pristine production overall. And I think this self-description of the album sums up the themes and quality of the record perfectly. The lyrical content points to the band growing tired, fearing growing older, fearing more extreme things like the eventual heat death of the universe. See till the ocean takes us all. It's an album soaked in this existential dread, desperately asking the listener, what does it all mean? Meanwhile, each song bolsters very clean, layered performances in the recording. Most songs come featuring an insanely singable hook, and not all is doom and gloom. The lows of songs like The Darkness and No Longer There contrast against the highs of classic jam pieces like Fishies and Sunny Moon. This makes the album arguably one of the fullest, most well-rounded LPs in the band's discography. However, there are also lots of tracks that seemingly do nothing more than pat out the track list. Cough Cough, Voodoo Cowboy. Because of this, I initially described So Many Nights as bloated and inconsistent. This album that we're about to listen to especially feels like the band's throw spaghetti at the wall, see what sticks album. There's a lot of really wide departures from their usual sound which can make it very unique and enjoyable to listen to. But I think I'm gonna predict now that my ranking for it is gonna be lower. <laughs> but before we get into the album, let's take care of some housekeeping. Don't worry, this is not an ad. If this is your first time on the channel, hello my dears, Hero the Main here. I usually put out Nintendo content, but I'm also one of the world's biggest Cat Empire fans. I love this band so much that I have been going through all of their albums in what I am calling the Cat Empathon. And even though this is the band's third studio album, you'll notice that this is the fourth installment of the Cat Empathon. I have a special episode in this series where I listen to Cities, 
a cat empire project with my channel artist Ray Adams. So far that is the best video in this series and my personal favorite and I highly recommend you watch it when you're done with this video. One thing I cover pretty thoroughly in that video is the history of cities being pulled and surprise redropped onto streaming services. I bring that up because I've been recording these videos in batches. This is a marathon project after all. And when I recorded my first batch, I had to skip straight from two shoes into so many nights. Cities was not on streaming services at that point in time. Not today. <laughs> they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't. For perspective, I recorded episodes 1, 2, and 4, the episode you're currently watching. I recorded all of those in late September of 2021. <laughs> That's around the time when the band announced their disbandment. The Cat Empire, meanwhile, performed their last show on April 14th, 2022. So this series may be taking a little longer than I intended for it to come out, but I am dedicated to make it to the end and listen to all what I call eight studio albums. I'm including cities in that number. I will listen to the band's entire discography. You have my word. So if you want to stick around for that journey, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, and or save the playlist these are all getting posted to. And also, you guys have taught me so much about cities that I didn't know about that project in the comments section of that video. So please, please, please drop your fun Cat Empire trivia in the comments below. I love that stuff. I'm eating it up. It makes me so happy to get that kind of feedback. I'm a big nerd for this band. I love learning new stuff. So let's, uh, let's rise up, fans. The Drop your wildest Cat Empire trivia in the comment section. Bonus points if you link a source. And now, let's get back into the meat and potatoes of the video. It Kicking off the album with the title track, So Many Nights. Gonna have to change my look for you. Well, I've got two shoes, but they've been walked too far. And I think that we could float from evening to the stars. When I see you in the distance with your friends. Uh, I look around and I look down at my threads. It's inappropriate that I should present like a retired man and always unpaid rent. So many nights. So many nights. Okay, something I'm remembering about this album that will be really fun for the car listening aspect of things. This album has some really catchy hooks. Good for the singing along. I was in a plane to Panama. Next up we have the song Panama. As to whether she enjoyed being in the air. This may be one of the only songs that uses violins in it. Well, I love things that seem impossible. Well, I love things that seem impossible. So curious, I had to 
to keep on thinking of her floating through the clouds, yeah. Okay, next up is fishies. I left the house, left the room with the foxy on my back and my supplies in a magic pack and I followed the sound of music not up a hill but down to an old wharf shack Inside I heard the trumpets call A salute to the champions on the wall And in the jazz of squalls And in passion balls she danced Oh and the night she looked so fine to me Why? Fishies to my hook. See what I was saying about this album being all about the hooks? Welcome Fishies to my hook. Is this the most popular song from this album? I think so. This or Panama? Panama's sweet and uplifting. This is this is for dancing though. It's not exactly love, it's to a doll. Oh wow did it did it I set the look the singing wow did it did it I was such the show also, if you look up to play, like, if you just type in how to play Cat Empire on ukulele, Fishies is one of two songs that comes up. <laughs> Welcome, Fishies, to my hook. Da -da 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 the other one is Eagle. Wait a second, are we on shuffle? Sunny before lonely? So I think this album, like Two Shoes, also had two releases, two uh, are on Spotify. And while the differences between the Two Shoes releases were minor, I'm listening to the really weirdly, se I think they messed up the sequence. This is not the sequencing I'm used to. What I'm used to is Lonely Moon precedes Sunny Moon, and they work so well together. So this one's making me mad. I'm gonna pull over. I pulled over and everything to pull up the one I'm used to. This bothers me way more than it would anyone else, I'm sure. The reason I wanted to list, I downloaded 2008s as well though, is the biggest difference is they have a, an, additional, an additional closer track. So Many Nights 2007 versus So Many Nights 2008. What's the difference? The 2007 release is the original Australian release and features what I argue is the definitive sequencing of the album. 2008 is the US run of the album and features a shuffled, <coughs> fucked up, uh, track list. <laughs> as well as the addition of Wanted to Write You a Love Song, a track repurposed and re-recorded from the band's demo days. 2008's release doesn't really improve on 2007 in any way, unless you really really like Wanted to Write You a Love Song. And in my history using streaming services, if there's only going to be one version of the album featured, it's almost always going to be the 2007 one. So for all intents and purposes, the original is the definitive way to listen to the album. The 
song is really fun to listen to in the shower for some reason. For me, in my personal experience. I'm here to tell you right now, we don't care. Let me tell you, right, let me tell you <laughs> We don't There's a lot more introspective songs on this album. And for me, it's a competition between No Mountain and this one. They both hit. Close your eyes and stare. The ground they're on is bare. And all of our desires. The mirror skies with flames. Smoke out heaven's home. They're actually not this way. Longer there. Here we go again. Here it goes again. Here it goes again. This album's a lot more introspective, a lot more, there's a lot more existential crisis in these songs, <laughs> crises. What will you do when you're no longer there, when the ocean takes us all? I think the band was sad at this point. Also, a lot of Harry's lyrics you'll notice in this album are a lot more manic than they usually are, or bombastic even, maybe is the word I'm looking for. But uh, if I remember correctly, I think he was getting over like some alcohol abuse problems at the time. And that uh, had something to do with how this album turned out. I mean, my journey with alcohol has been um, just that when I was really young, when I started touring and there's all this free alcohol around, it was something that I reached for more and more and it was all really fun and great times and you know i've always been like in real life pretty shy and especially with people i don't know and alcohol always helped me kind of get past that and be extroverted on stage which is important especially when you're young i guess it became a big part of my performance i never really thought about it much and then there was a point where i realized that I was drinking a lot and kind of something really switched and all of a sudden I realized I was getting into arguments all the time, falling out with friends and getting dark all of a sudden, like something had just changed in me. Um, but it was easy enough for me to see that and to be like, well, I got to stop drinking and I did, and I stopped drinking for a while. And then Felix here just seems like he's like getting old. <laughs> like 
just worried about what he'll leave behind when he's gone. And it makes sense. The band at this point in their career is tr transitioning from a live while we're young festival party band. And they still keep the like, they come back to let the good times roll, that kind of vibe. But this and cinema, you can hear their hearts are yearning, almost. I think that's the word I'm looking for. There's just a lot of anxiety, underlying anxiety in these songs. And you know, I'm starting to relate more to this album. <laughs> I related to it less as a college student, and I'm nowhere near the age these guys were when they recorded this song, but I'm hitting a point in my life too where there's a lot of change happening, and I am kind of wondering about these bigger questions. This album I, is a lot tighter than I remember it being, honestly. Maybe I've just grown up. Cause everyone's crazy They're all lonely too Like their mothers Like their fathers Everyone's crazy Under a lonely moon Some more manic screaming Brought to you by Harry. like becoming nighttime as I listen to so many nights. Well, good news, folks. We're shifting from a lonely moon to a sunny moon. She walks with me alone into the night. Over on a mellow scene We're done five nights and tomorrow's free Why 
to see me at this point. <laughs> song done better on this same exact album. Ironic. <laughs> this song is like a classic Cat Empire song, but it needs a little pick-me-up. It needs a little strong coffee itself. Till the ocean takes us all. So right away. I love you till the ocean takes us all. 
This is a story of two lovers like twins. They wouldn't do lovers' things, blame original sin. Look into their eyes only for the meaning of the hour, as if they're only everything existed in the power. Yeah. Lo and behold, they drifted on a stream. Coming, how does it go? Oh, life is but a dream. Well, the stream became a river, and the river started to tow. They, they didn't notice at all. I love you like oil, coming down hard. I need you so fast, I need you so right away. Takes the soul. Have you heard about the phrase says ignorance is bliss? Well, what bliss could lead to this? Oh, I need you like water. You give me order. It's getting harder. Believe me when I say that I can spring rain. I need you, babe. But nothing lasts forever after all. I love you till the ocean takes us all. Harry Angus James has such a crazy voice, man. I love you till the ocean takes us all, my dears. I don't like this song. Voodoo Cowboy. Earlier I said Saltwater was my uh, least favorite Cat Empire album. I lied. I forgot Voodoo Cowboy existed. Like the song is fine, it's just really unambitious for a Cat Empire song. They're like, let's make a song about a voodoo cowboy. And then it's just like some just kind of generic western thing. Like it's just a very unexciting song. is radio song. Fun fact about this, the little uh, drum slash marching line bit that kicks off the song, it's copy and pasted at the end of like a drum from their album Steal the Light. The two drum parts are identical, or cowbell parts I guess.
Should be more popular than it is. Now we return it for an hour, these songs at night. But one it sings for you, I love you for a night. More than the memories of broken images and fights. More than the memories of broken images and fights. I don't wanna love you like a radio song. I wanna love you like a festival song. <laughs> We're getting close to the end now. We're listening currently to Won't Be Afraid, which is the original closer track to this album. Uh, but since we're listening to 2008's version, we have one more track after this called I Wanted to Write You a Love Song. Once again, this is Won't Be Afraid. This is the first time that the band, I think, didn't have an insanely long closing track to finish out their album. And in fact, from this point out, I think... Uh, wait, actually, no, scratch that thought. But yeah, they stopped being like 10 minute long closers with this album. This song, I think, encapsulates pretty well what this album is going for. Wanting to write you a love song, we'll see, is pretty weird. Um, it doesn't fit the vibe of this album as much. But I do like the song. dark. I don't even know if I'll be able to get enough of me in this <laughs> in post reco recovering the footage. But I think that's a nice little artistic statement we wrote out into the night through so many nights. 
<laughs> and yeah, so I think my reason for not liking this album as much, I kind of misspoke. It's not really an inconsistent album. I, I think it's consistent fine enough, uh, with the exception of Voodoo Cowboy. Now, the reason I think I kind of assumed or in the past thought that was this album being inconsistent is at that same moment the biggest departure musically on the album happens is also when the album kind of tanks in terms of um, energy levels. I mean, this album is obviously kind of... It, it's a more introspective look at the nightlife, but the album gets bloated in the second half. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this album, it does... The band gives a lot of breathing room to each song, so you can really digest these songs. But also, I think some of them just kind of overstay their welcome or could have been cut from the album entirely. The first album of... Or the first half of the album does not match the energy of the second half of the album. Given the thing is pretty bloated, it has Voodoo Cowboy, which I think is the most unnecessary song in the band's discography, I am going to give it a D rank. Or, you know what? We're gonna hook it back up. We're gonna... Because this uh, album does make up for a little bit of the slower pacing with some really catchy hooks, probably some of the band's catchiest hooks with songs like Fishies and Panama, I think this album, we can bring it up to a C tier. It's a perfectly average album. It would not be where I recommend you start when listening to The Cat Empire. Really hardcore fans, I think, would get the most enjoyment out of this anyway. Final ranking, So Many Nights, 2007 and 2008. We're gonna give that a C tier.